I just want to start a little bit. I'm going to start a little bit different today. I'm going to start with a little bit of um, what I'm noticing and tuning into. So I'll start with a little bit of uh, updates and then we'll start with your stories if that's okay. So, you know, I was pondering um, this morning what we were going to talk about and some of what Spirit wanted me to share with all of you. And what I've been noticing with a lot of participants in the Manifesting Challenge is that you can hear me okay? Great. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. So what I've noticed is people telling me that they really wanted to move forward with their one incredible thing or doing some mentoring with me or a training program, but they just didn't have the money or they didn't have the time or they didn't feel like they had it within them to be able to fulfill their promise to themselves. And quite honestly, I'm actually seeing that pattern repeat itself with the one incredible thing, whether they want to take something bigger, or whether they're thinking small, or whether they have a blank mind, they can't even think about what they'd like to create. So I was reflecting on the people that did create incredible things and are reporting to me about their amazing successes and how they're creating um, progress in their one incredible thing. And what I noticed was there was something that was uniquely different between the people that were sort of mediocre, hanging out, not showing up, not giving to themselves what they deserve. And that is courage. Or maybe you could say it another way, confidence or belief in themselves. It's an energetic pattern that a lot of us default to. We don't even realize is running in the background of who we are and what we do. We've all got our patterns, you know, I've shared it a few times, you know, I didn't come from a successful family, I didn't come a lot of my spiritual abilities were dwarfed or minimized, I didn't realize or acknowledge any potential that I had. And you know, let's be real, things have been pretty scary and uncertain and unpredictable for the last two and a half years. A lot of people have lost loved ones. You know, our world is turned upside down with our jobs, our careers are being reconfigured. People are quitting long-time careers. They want to shift. They, they realize that their family importance and, and their health and, and, and who they are at the soul level is more important to them to continue through the rest of their life with. So we've had COVID and now we're all experiencing, let's be real, I'm going to talk about the elephant in the room. Gas prices are up you know, uh, food prices are up. People are sitting on the fence. They putting off purchases or doing things for themselves because of the uncertainty, right? I don't know. Now there's many people doing really, really exceptionally well. They're not affected by that and they keep pushing forward. But there's many, and I would say the masses, and this is probably the biggest reason I I was guided to set this this pattern of being here every day for almost three weeks for you guys to serve you to support you in pushing through that pattern that's keeping you stuck or keeping you living in a in a limited vibration and not acknowledging what you're afraid of I mean I'll admit I'm afraid too at times you know I was reflecting back oh I just want to uh mention you know you almost have to be in a coma if you haven't heard, the, you know, financial experts talking about, you know, doom and gloom. And, you know, that's incredibly frightening for most people when we continually look at money as the reason why we're doing things. Or if I just had the money, I'll be able to do this. Or if I just had the money, I could go there or I could do this. Well, you know, I re I was reflecting back in 2008 when there was a huge economic crash, right? Some of you aren't old enough to recognize or remember that or even get it, understand it. But so what happened is I had a lot of clients losing their homes. And I, I was in Southern California and there was incredible strife. And I would honestly say the depression in the whole area was incredibly heavy. And it was a little bit different there, or maybe it was just my perception, but I went to Canada 
at the time and then came back and there was a huge difference just in the mindset. So I did notice it there. But what did I do? You know, I didn't lose my house. I opted to unload. I was hearing a message to keep it simple, to keep it simple. I needed my life to be simple. Not that I was, you know, missing, going homeless or living in a car or even in living in a, in a, what do you call it? A tiny house, nothing like that. But what I did was I got a frenzy. And to this day, well, I can equate it to Sekhmet, bless her heart, but there was a power that came through me that I started selling everything I owned. I sold my whole house. If you've lived in a house for over 20 years, you know, kind of crap you collect old paint and garden tools and you name it. I had travel treasures and well, I sold everything I owned in 45 days. I went on a wild spree, whatever I didn't sell in the garage sale. I did one garage sale. And I went to the swap meet when I didn't sell there, gave it away. I literally fearlessly unloaded everything. I have to say, I, ke I kept a five by five storage. That's all I kept, mostly travel treasures. And so what did I do next? Honestly, I was catatonic for a, a 18 months. I didn't know what to do with myself. I knew, well, in fact, I was even questioning my sanity because nobody around me was going through that massive things. Yeah, people were losing their houses, but they would just go rent over there. I couldn't picture anything else for myself. And I kept asking the question, where am I going next? Where am I going next? What, where do I, where, what, what's the plan? I couldn't come up with a plan. Then all of a sudden, I had been working with this woman who was a doctor, a chiropractor in Dubai. Actually, she was living in Chicago, but she was born in Dubai. Well, after working in my mastery training, her, her career, her relationships with her family, with her partner, everything shifted. And she took herself and her new business back to Dubai. She relocated. And she said to me, Amira, you should come to Dubai. Nobody does what you do. So I'm like, okay, great plan. Find me somebody that can help me out with promotions and I'll go. I went for two weeks. I came with pockets loaded with cash. I came back and I sold whatever else I had. And I sold my car. In fact, I got on the plane and the guy selling my car for me picked it up for me at the airport. I had a one-way ticket. I had $1,000 in my pocket. And I had no clients except for that one person in Dubai. So what is, what is it that pushed me into that? Was it fear? What, I, I tested the water. I didn't research anything about Dubai. All I knew is there was incredible strife where I was and people there had jobs. That was the only thing I knew. And I, and I, I didn't know for some time, but everybody was under incredible stress. And they needed someone like me. And they needed a solution, a fast, quick solution. You know, I was teaching my tools to the bank employees. I mean, here in the West, it's not even accepted. But I was teaching to the bankers. And they just embraced it, right? So the bottom line here is... I don't share this with a lot of people, but for probably 20 years while I was in my professional career, I did personal development. I learned to push through some of my blocks. I learned when I was standing on the pole or zip lining, or um, I remember going to Peru and I swam in the lake with piranhas, little baby piranhas, mind you. I got in the freaking lake and swam with them next to the boat because I wasn't afraid. So what's the difference? I mean, yes, it's scary times. If you say listening to CNN or CNBC, or if you listen to all of that, that will dwindle your confidence and your certainty and your focus. It will deplete your energy. It will corrupt your vibration and it will anchor whatever patterns you've got already set going on for you. Those things that we're told when we're young, that keep coming up for us to take a look at because they want to be eradicated. When I had my near-death experience, when I got a life review, what I got to see 
was all my timeline as if wherever I had emotional baggage, wherever I had beliefs or limiting ideas, things that held me down, that made me sick. I literally saw that in my review. And that is what pushes me forward is to push through my own limiting patterns and beliefs that I can't see. And today that's how I help you is to remove, to release, or to identify. Some of us don't know where they are because I know you're smart. I know you would have already released them if you knew or could identify them, stop them in their tracks and pluck them out by the root. Not just cut them off like they tell you to cord cut. You got to pull out the roots. Otherwise it will fester. It will grow again. Next season, you'll have another dandelion in your lawn. <laughs> so that, and I love dandelions, by the way. So dandelions, don't be, don't be um, <laughs> offended. So I realized that that's what's missing here is I talked about earlier is be, do, have. We have to be at a particular vibration. We have to take action. We have to have that courage being in a space of confidence or gaining the confidence that we can take the next step, whether it's a loan that you need to get, whether it's applying for a different kind of job. Rebecca was sharing with us this week how she just went for it and started applying for jobs that were way beyond what she thought she could get. Yet a year ago, she said that goal for $50,000 a month. Okay, so it's still working because she's working the vibration. I know that, you know, Nicola, you had shared how you went and you got some support with your new dishwasher, but you had already paid off the high interest loans. So it's almost like you found a way, right? And that's what it is. It's taking courage, pushing through that, that uh, story that you tell yourself why you can't do it. I'm not smart enough. I don't have enough time. I don't know where I'm going to get the money. You know, I was talking to a client who actually sold her car. It was a high-end car. She paid off the loan and then had the money to take to apply to my training. That's how bad she wanted it. So I just want to share all this, like how bad do you want this? By the way, when I went to Dubai, I told you I only had $1,000. I didn't know. I had no plan. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I made it messy. I tried everything. I started going to all the spas. I knocked on every single door. I didn't know I needed a license or a visa. And then I figured it out and some of them guided me and I made it happen. I committed myself to four or five days at different spas and I literally created my own business like that. Messy, uncomfortable. It wasn't slick. I showed up. So I'm saying this to encourage you to show up for yourself. You're one incredible thing. And that's the reason why I offer, before I even take you into my mentoring, I offer a four-session private journey with me so we can push through those blocks. I know, I know, I know, and it's a proven fact. If I sell you a $300 or a $500 program like all the other coaches and mentors out there, you're not going to do it. You know, you know yourself, and that's why people stop themselves. Oh, they think they're going to do it, but they don't make the time. They don't push through their blocks and patterns to give them their, that, 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 whatever training or it is that you want. So there you have it, guys. Um, now I'd like to open it up and welcome you this morning. Thank you for shining bright with me.